Retina Rounds, episode number 101. Subretinal bands. Subretinal bands are proliferations that can occur with chronic and PVR-associated retinal detachments. And removal may be necessary if the bands are tenting up the macula or opening up retinal breaks and preventing the retina from reattaching. However, removal of these bands can be associated with complications. And in today's video, guest surgeon Dr. Anibal Francone demonstrates a simple but very clever modification using the flex loop as counter-traction to prevent iatrogenic retinal damage. This is the procedure that he described in podcast number 14, and if you haven't already, make sure to check that podcast out. Thank you, Dr. Francone, for sharing this case. Okay, let's start by showing you an animation of a traditional approach for subretinal band removal. First, diathermy is used to create a retinotomy overlying the subretinal band, and then forceps, typically max grip forceps, are used to grasp that subretinal band and then pull or extract that, that band out through the retinotomy. And in the process of removing that band, uh, sometimes complications can occur. In this uh, animation, we're showing uh, that there can be some hemorrhage uh, at the retinotomy site. But there certainly are a number of uh, other complications that can occur, including expansion of the retinotomy. Uh, if uh, PFCL or air is in the eye, sometimes that, uh, those substances can migrate into the subretinal space. And then, of course, if the band is quite large or long and tightly adherent to the retina in distal locations, pulling on that membrane can result in distal retinal tears. So here's an animation of Dr. Francone's modification, which he calls the napkin loop technique. So you can see that a flex loop is placed over the retinotomy to create countertraction, sort of holding the retina down while that subretinal band is being removed. And in the process, uh, one can avoid a lot of the complications that we just discussed. So let's see this technique in action. You can see here the subretinal band that looks to be in the temporal macula. Diathermy is used to create a retinotomy. And the flex loop is used to cover the retinotomy site, holding the retina down while max grip forceps are used to grasp that subretinal band uh, and extract it from uh, the retinotomy site. You can see that as, the, uh, as that uh, band is coming out, if there wasn't counter traction over the retina, the entire retina would be pulled up and that retinotomy site uh, may expand uh, and a number of the other complications we discussed may occur. So let's have one more look at this technique. Uh, which Dr. Uh, Francone refers to as the napkin loop technique. Uh, diathermy again is applied over the uh, subretinal band. The flex loop is positioned over the, drain over the uh, retinotomy site, and then max grip forceps are used to grasp the uh, subretinal band. As that band is being pulled out from the subretinal space, the flex loop is used to hold the retina down to provide counter traction. And again, this is going to help to avoid expanding the retinotomy site. It's going to help to prevent uh, hemorrhage at the retinotomy site. And it's also going to help to uh, decrease the risk for a distal uh, retinal break. So this is a really nice modification, very simple uh, modification, but very elegant uh, to perform this procedure uh, with a great deal uh, more safety. All right, let's go over a few take-home points regarding subretinal band removal. Now, first off, not all subretinal bands need to be removed. And you may encounter subretinal bands in chronic retinal detachments or in PVR-associated retinal detachments. And if a buckle is being used, uh, for example, to treat a chronic retinal detachment, often these subretinal bands can be left in place and they don't really interfere uh, with adequately reattaching the retina. Now, even in cases where a vitrectomy is being performed, subretinal bands can also be left in place. However, you may want to consider removal of subretinal bands if they are, for example, tenting up the macula, thereby interfering with the patient's postoperative visual outcome, or if the bands are holding up or tenting open retinal breaks and preventing the retina from reattaching. If you're going to remove subretinal bands, they can generally be accessed through two techniques. One would be to make a retinotomy or even multiple retinotomies to access the subretinal space and the subretinal bands. Diathermy can then be applied over the subretinal band, and you generally want to position this retinotomy towards the middle of the band to be able to extract it most efficiently. Once the retinotomy has been created, a max grip forcep or some similar forcep can be used to grasp the subretinal band and then lift it up using a rocking motion to gently release it from its adhesion points in the subretinal space. If the band is very broad, sometimes extreme anteroposterior elevation uh, can result in expansion of the retinotomy and potentially the creation of retinal breaks in more distal locations. The, mo the modification that was shown by Dr. Francone is really an elegant way to keep the retina pushed down to provide counter traction uh, for the band to be removed with minimal distortion or elevation of the retina, and that's going to help to decrease the risk of iatrogenic retinal damage.
Another option would, would be to perform a retinectomy and flip the retina over to access the subretinal bands. Uh, however, this approach is generally too aggressive just for the management of subretinal bands. Uh, it's generally unnecessary unless a large retinectomy is already going to be performed to reattach the retina. So the next time that you're in a case where you have to remove a subretinal band, I'd highly recommend trying this technique out. Uh, and we want to thank Dr. Francone for sharing it with us. If you enjoyed this video, please visit us at retinarounds.com. There you can sign up for our email list. You'll get a notification every time a new video is posted. And if you have an interesting video or a tip or trick that you'd like to share, please follow the links on our website and you can upload your video there. Thanks so much for watching.